Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and today in this video we are going to study about structure of antibodies. Now this is the general structure of an antibody. What all we can notice in this structure is one arm is long as you can see here the blue one and here the yellow one. So this is known as heavy chain because it consists of how many? 1, 2, BH, CH, CH2, CH3, 4 segments. So definitely this is the heavy chain and another chain is small in size consisting of only VL and CL. So this chain is known as light chain. Now in both heavy and the light chain we can see it is written VH and VL. V stands for variable. H and L stands for either heavy or the light chain. That means it is the variable fragment or the variable segment of if H means heavy chain, if L means of light chain. Now this end, the variable end is an amino terminal, NH3+. Now we another have that is called carboxyl terminal. This COOH is attached here. So the other end is known as carboxyl terminal. Now in the other end, the alphabet mentioned is CL or CH. C stand for constant. That means same in all the cases. Variable means these are different in all the cases in all the antibodies even in single antibody for different antigens this variable segment will be different because the name itself says it is the variable that means depending upon the antigen it is it varies from one antibody to another and next half consists of the C region that is the constant region that means here the variation is not present it is same in all the cases now in some antibodies as you can see here it is written CH1, CH2 and CH3. So these constant regions in some antibodies there are three constant fragments in some antibodies there are four constant fragments this we will see in the next of next slide. So different antibodies will have different fragments of this constant region some will have three constant regions some will have four constant regions. Now the heavy chain and the light chain is connected with each other through SS bond as you can see here. What do we mean by SS bond? This is disulfide bond. So heavy chain is connected with light chain through disulfide bond. Similarly the heavy chain are also connected amongst itself with the disulfide bond. So that means with this we are clear that antibodies consist of amino acids and it should be cysteine rich. Other amino acids are also there but apart from that it should contain cysteine otherwise it cannot form the disulfide bond. Now one more segment you can notice this part. This is known as hinge region. This region maintains the flexibility. It is like a spring as you can see here. So it helps to move these arms. It is a spring like this. So either it helps to move the arm away from each other also it helps to move the arm towards each other also. So depending upon the size of the antigen or where it has to bind, this hinge works as a spring that helps to move the arms of the antibody to capture the antigen. As you can say, you can take it as our elbow. If I throw a ball towards you, depending upon the size of the ball, either you will move your both the hands apart far from each other or you will bring both your hands close to each other depending upon how much big the ball is size of the ball now to move the hand away or towards each other what works your elbow because your elbow works as a joint over there due to which you can move your hands away and towards each other to hold the ball similarly these are the hands or the arm of antibodies that helps to capture the antigen and this arm is movable it made movable with the help of this hinge region which is also connected with each other by disulfide bond apart from that we also found the attach of CHO carbohydrate with the constant region so the upper part which is the variable part we call it as a fab fab means fragment of antigen binding this is the fragment that binds with the antigen and these constant regions are known as fc that is fragment of crystallization they crystallizes and that's how they fix the antibody at one position suppose i throw a ball to you 
and your hand is already broken will you able to catch the ball no because you cannot able to make your hand fix at one position to hold the ball similarly this is called as fragment of crystallization because it crystallizes so that the antibody remains fixed at one position and with the help of hinge it can move its arm depending upon the size and shape of antigen to hold it so this is about antibody structure now there are two major classes of antibody light chain now we are talking about only the light chains so there are two major classes of antibody light chain this variable vl that is the amino terminal half now this in complete this variable region the top 110 amino acid these are extremely variable in nature the whole variable segment is variable in nature but in that the first 110 amino acids are extremely variable in nature the constant region is not variable and it consists of two types it is of two types one is kappa another one is lambda chains now based on amino acid substitution this lambda chain could be of following types that is lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and lambda 4 so see l can be of two types kappa or lambda in case of lambda again it can be of four types lambda 1 2 3 and 4 in humans 60% of this constant chain is of lambda type and 40% are of kappa type now all light chain the molecular weight is approximately 22 kilo dalton within the variable region of the light chain there were regions of hyper variability as i said first 110 is extremely variable so this is the region of hyper variability since these hyper variable regions could be shown to interact with the bound antigen they are named as complementarity determining regions or cdr this hyper variable regions only the first 110 is known as cdr because this segment binds with the antigen so it should be complement with the antigen so hence called as complementarity determining region now if you talk about the heavy chain there are five major classes of heavy chain now the constant region for the variable region it is same this part is variable and here also approximately 110 amino acid first 110 amino acids are hyper variable in nature coming to the constant region it falls into five category in case of light chain it was two categories here it is five category mu delta gamma epsilon and alpha if it is alpha we call it as it is written here if it is mu we call it as igm antibodies are also known as ig ig means immunoglobulin why immunoglobulin because these are the molecules of our immune system and this is globular proteins we already studied in biochemistry that proteins are of two types one globular another one is fibrous protein so what type of protein are antibodies these are globular protein hence antibody is also known by ig that is immunoglobulin so if the constant region is mu it is igm you can remember with mu m so igm for delta starting with d so it is igd for gamma starting with g so the antibody will be igg for epsilon ig e for alpha ig a so with the first letter of these spellings you can identify which antibody it corresponds to now the length of constant region of heavy chain is either 330 amino acid residue or 440 amino acid residues so gamma delta and alpha consist of 330 amino acid residues and mu and epsilon contains 440 amino acid residues so 440 amino acid residues means definitely mu and epsilon they consist of one extra constant region as i said in the last slide that some heavy chain contains three constant regions and some contains four constant region so mu and epsilon chain consist of four constant region therefore they are 440 amino acids long now iga igd and igg the weight is 55 kilo dalton and m and e are 20% heavier now from here also you can get to know m and e are 20% heavier means definitely they consist of some extra fragments or segment so that extra segment is of constant region now these antibodies can be of sub classes like iga consists of two sub classes iga1 and a2 similarly igg consists of four sub classes that is igg1 2 3 and 4 
Now this table in short, it is showing all the classes of amino acids, the heavy chain it contains, the number of constant region it has, subclasses, life chain, J chain and the molecular formula. Like for example, in the first it is IgG, that means it is G. So that means heavy chain is of gamma, G, gamma and IgG. It consists of constant region, how many? Three. Subclasses gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3 and gamma 4 because in the last slide we saw that IgG consists of four subclasses and IgA consists of two subclasses. So here you can say in A you have alpha 1, alpha 2 and rest all are none. Coming to light chain for any antibodies the light chain can, can be either of kappa type or of lambda type. Now what is this J chain? J chain means the amino acid that consists of that are not monovalent like for example below figures are there IgG, IgD, IgE these are monovalent. Now coming to IgA it is a dimer. This is one monomer and this is one monomer. So these two monomer are joined by a chain which is known as J chain. Similarly IgM it is pentamer as you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So all are connected with a chain called J chain. So J chain will be found in the antibodies that are polyvalent. So the polyvalent antibodies are IgM which is pentavalent and IgA which is a dimer. Clear? So this is in short about all the antibodies. So if you found the video informative please do like share and subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for the next video notification. Till then stay safe stay happy.